Abu Sir Melek. Mummies prove ancient Egyptians were black. In the summer of 2017, newspapers and commentators around the world have talked about the Abu Sir mummies and how they proved the ancient Egyptians were not Africans. But this is not true. Abu Sir Melek is an Egyptian city in northern modern Egypt. The archaeological site Abu Sir el Melek was inhabited from at least 3250 BC until around 700 of the Christian era and was of great religious significance because of its active cult to Osiris, the god of the dead, which made it an attractive burial site for centuries. Here we find many Egyptian inscriptions and paintings that prove the Egyptians in the area were black Africans. From the old kingdom of Egypt down to the Hyksos period and beyond. Much of the iconographic evidence from Abu Sir was published by the Czech Institute of Egyptology. Here you can see many of the wonderful pictures that these archaeologists have collected and published in numerous volumes at their institute. These commentators base their headlines on the work of geneticists who analyzed 150 mummies and used 90 mummies in their study from the University of Tübingen and Felix Lushan Skull Collection. This shows that the researchers used a bias selection process to influence their research. The researchers analyzed the DNA of the mummies and found that they carried DNA common to people living in the Levant, an area including Anatolia and Syria Palestine. In support of this conclusion, the researchers speculate that a massive migration of Asians during the Hyksos dynasty strengthened the presence of Eurasian DNA among the Egyptians. It is the presence of this alleged Eurasian DNA found in the Abu Sir Malik mummies that is supposed to prove the ancient Egyptians were Caucasians instead of Africans. The research data does not support the conclusion that the ancient Egyptians were Caucasian. Firstly, Two-thirds of the sample in the study were individual mummies of people who were descendants of the Greeks, Romans, and Turks that drove many ancient Egyptians into Nubia and West Africa. Given the sample of mummies of non-Egyptian origin in the study, it was natural that the mummies would possess non-African DNA. Secondly, the presence of the Hyksos in Lower Egypt does not support the idea that the Egyptians were black, were not black. This is because of the fact that the Hyksos were descendants of the Kushites who lived in Levant for thousands of years. Around 800 BC, the Greek poet Homer mentions the Ethiopians or Kushites in the Iliad and the Odyssey. Homer the Greek poet said that the Kushites were the most just of men, the favorites of the gods. To the Greeks and Romans, there were two Kush empires one in Africa and the other in Asia. Homer alluded to the two Kushite empires when he wrote in the Odyssey, a race divided whom the sloping rays, the rising and the sunning sun surveys. In the Iliad 1, 423, Homer wrote that Zeus went to Cush to banquet with the blameless Ethiopians. In 64 BC, Strabo the Greek, geographer and historian, in chapter one of his geography, stated that there were two Kush empires, one in Asia, the other in Africa. Strabo claimed in addition to Kush in Nubia and Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, some previous Roman Greco-Roman authors considered southern Phoenicia up to Mount Amanus in Syria as Kush. One of the major Kushite tribes in the Levant were the Hadians. Pharaoh Suhure referred to the Tehenu leader as Hati Tehenu. The name Hatti corresponds to the name Hatti for a tribe in Anatolia. The Hatti people often referred to themselves as Kashkas. 
The Hadi were one of the Kushite tribes in Nubia during the Old Kingdom. During the fifth dynasty of Egypt, 2563 to 2423 BC, during the reign of Sahure, there is mention of the Tehun people. The Tehinu people were also called the Sigru people in some literature. The Sigru people occupied the Sudan and Fazan regions between 3700 and 1300 BC. The Sigru were called Temehus. The Temehus were organized into two groups, the Tehinu in the north and the Nehesi in the south. Egyptian Kash corresponds to Kashkas the name for the Hadians. This means that the N25 represented the name Kush and Kash for the ethnonym Kushite during the 5th dynasty of Egypt. N25 is the Egyptian uh, character that represented the Kush or Kushites. The Egyptian term Kasut has three different elements in the ethnonym, Kash, Kash, Kush, plus the U, which is the Egyptian plural marker while the Egyptian T was a suffix that signified land people. We learn from the Wendy inscriptions that the Kushites lived in Nubia. Breast's translation of the Wendy inscription indicates that Haki Kashut was not always translated as king's foreign. The original meaning of Heke, Kash, was king's Negro land, as indicated in the Breast translation. But as you know, there's no such place as Negro land. Negro land was just a Eurocentric term where blacks were supposed to live, so the actual meaning was king of Kosh, not king of Negro land. Kings of Kosh meant kings of the Kushite. An administrator of the old kingdom named Wini used the term Haki Kosh in reference to the Kushites. James Henry Breasted in Ancient Records of Egypt, Part 1, par Section 293, translate the inscription of Weenie as follows. His Majesty made war on the Asiatic sand dwellers, and His Majesty made an army of many tens of thousands in the entire south, southward to Elephantine, and northward to Aphroditus, Populus, Obesiris. The Urkthrit, Kesh, the Mazoi, Kash, the Yam, Kash, among the Wawet Kosh, among the Kau Kosh, and in the land of Temek. Temek was the name for C group people that lived in the Fazan. So as you can say, see, the Egyptians in the Old Kingdom knew perfectly well that the people in the Sudan who called themselves Kushites formerly was given the name Kosh. Most researchers have assumed that the Greco-Roman assertions that the Kushites ruled the Middle East from Phoenicia to Syria was a myth. But the ceilings and other inscriptions of the Hyksos king, Apophis, suggest that the Greco-Roman authors were right. The first four rulers of the Hyksos called themselves Hakikashut on their seals, and a monumental door jab from Averis also tells the same title. This is primary contemporaneous ancient Egyptian literature, epigraphic documentation, evidence in indicating that the Hoxos called themselves Kosh. The Hoxos worshiped Ra. Hoxos kings were proud of their Kushite origin. In the Hoxos seals, the kings wrote their names followed by Hekakash, i.e. kings of the Kushites. These ceilings are primary contemporaneous literature indicating that the Hoxos were Kushites. The Hoxos ruled Egypt from 1650 to 1550 BC. The new kingdom lasted from 1549 to 1292 BC. During the new kingdom, Egyptians used the name Aumra as a generic name for the Asians. The term Habiru was an ethnonym for one of the Asian tribes. It is clear that the Habiru and Eki Kashut were the same people, they would have had the same name given the fact the new kingdom began at the end of the Heki Kashut dynasty. So, definitely, the uh, leaders in the new kingdom would have known what to name these people. Apophis Horus' name was Shetep Tawi. 
It is found on an offering table. Pharaoh Paphos had three prayer nomina, or throne names. Nebuchadnezzar, Achenera, and now Usura Warsaw, during different parts of his 40 to 50 year reign. Apophis maintained the traditions of the Egyptians during his role. He is credited with encouraging his scribes to copy priceless Egyptian texts, including the Edwin Smith Surgical Papyrus, the oldest named Surgical Handbook, the Rhine Mathematical Papyrus, which explains Egyptian mathematical theory, and the Westcar Papyrus. These texts would have been lost to mankind except for the foresight of Pharaoh Apophis. It is most interesting that Apophis and the other rulers of the Hyksos dynasty called themselves Haki Hashut on their seals and a monumental door jam from Averis. This is epigraphic evidence indicating that the Hyksos called themselves kings of Kosh or Kush. The Hyksos worshiped Seat, the god of Averis, and Ra. The example of Egyptian mummies in the Abu Sir Malek mummy study included pre Ptolemaic. New Kingdom, Third Intermediate Period and the Late Period, Ptolemaic and Roman Period. Although two-thirds of the mummies in the Abu Sir mummy study were of mummies dating back to the Late Period, Ptolemaic and Roman Period of non-Egyptian rule of Egypt, there were some Egyptian mummies in the study that date back to pre-Ptolemaic times that date between 992 BC to 749 BC. The pre-Ptolemaic Egyptians dating between 992 and 749 BC would not have included only descendants of the Hyksos. This sample of ancient Egyptian DNA was 600 years after the Upper Egyptians had retaken Lower Egypt and had established, established extensive colonies in the Levant. As a result, the mass majority of the population of Abu Sir would have been Egyptians, not Eurasians. Remember this. Remember that these people in 992 to 749 BC were Egyptians. In the Abu Sir mummy study, there were 160 mummies in the study. That was trimmed down to 90 mummies. A total of 27 mummies were dated between 992 to 749 BC. In figure one, you can see the clads carried by these Egyptians. Below are the frequencies of the haplogroups among Egyptians at this time. They had U, 18.5%, T, 22.2%, J, 18.5%, X, uh, 675, 10,000%, and so on and so forth. But as you can see, already these Egyptians were carrying Levant or Eurasian haplogroups. That means that these haplogroups could not have originated in Levant because the Levant, as I said earlier, was already occupied first by the Hoxas or Kushites. And Egypt was occupied by other blacks in Egypt. So definitely these haplogroups are not Eurasian haplogroups. These haplogroups are African haplogroups. The presence of these haplogroups among the Abu Sir Melik population shows that the U, T, and J clads had a high frequency among the Egyptians. That many of the so-called Middle East clads were already present in Egypt before the Greco-Romans, Turks, and etc. ruled Egypt. In conclusion, the Abu Sir Melek mummies that represent the period before the Greco-Roman Turks and etc. ruled Egypt between 992 to 749 BC shows that the so-called Eurasian genes are really African genes taken to the Levant by the Kushites or Kush. Instead of proving that the ancient Egyptians were Caucasians, the pre ptolemaic mummies provide more data on the African origin of the so-called Eurasian DNA, DNA. Yes, the ancient Egyptians were black, not Caucasians.